Hi, I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and thank you for joining me for some crafting with Kathy. I've decided to do a little bit more complex card today with a bit more layered stamping and um, oh, a few little tricky bits. So let's see how we go. I'm using um, one of our ladies, Miranda, and also the Bohemian Bliss uh, paper pack from Beati and also some of the Beati stamps. So let's have a look. We're going to be working on a square format. The stamps I've chosen is Miranda's Close Up. Just lift her up a bit so you're not getting glare from the packaging. And also a little bit out of the Dreamcatcher set. We'll use the delicate and wonderful stamps from the Beati Bohemian Bliss collection. And also one of the greetings out of the Uniquely Creative Sweet Sentiments Builder sets. Let's hold that up so you're not getting glare there. The paper, as I said, is from the Bohemian Bliss paper pack. And I've chosen to use, they've got some sheets where you've got uh, four to a page. And for this one, because I wanted to do a fair bit of stamping on it, I've chosen just the plain um, sort of watercolory looking background there. So these ones are, are available in the set as full size pieces or as the smaller ones. Our inks that we're using, a uh, bit of a combination. We've got some chalk inks for building up our foundation on Miranda. Then we're using some out of the Catherine Pooler set. There's um, Aquatini from the uh, Life of the Party set of eight pads. And then also Grape Crush and all that jazz which are from the Carnival set. And then we'll be doing our colouring with some uniquely creative markers. Uh, and there's also going to be some midnight black there just to stamp Miranda's outline. And we'll be using some VersaFine for, uh, VersaMark, sorry, for embossing. So let's grab a few ink pads and get started. So I've wanted to make Miranda, I wanted to give her a hippie look. Poor Miranda, she's the one we always tend to pick on when I'm doing face painting on her or whatever. So we're going to give her this hippie look. So to do that, I wanted to give her a headband and a choker. So I actually stamped her on, so I've done a bit of preparation first because I knew this was going to be take a little bit of time. So I stamped her out on just a bit of scrap paper and then with pencil I sketched the shape that I would like and the size for the headband and choker. And then cut those out, use those as a guide to then trace around them on a bit of pattern paper. This is where I was saying in one of my earlier videos that uh, when you're doing cutting some of these lovely papers back for using different sizes and shapes of the card, save some of your off cuts because you can often use them for extra punch bits or in this case for making a headband and a little choker for around her neck. So we're going to edge those with a bit of purple and um, then stick them on. So we've got our base card here, which is a square format, and I'm going to work with it going from the acro at the top and to the pink down the bottom, but we're going to add some stenciling and stamping over the top of that. But I'm wanting to work out my colours. So we're going to be using the Aquatini, the Grape Crush, and some All That Jazz. So I'm just going to put those onto a little bit of scrap cotton blend so that I can have a look at the markers and see which ones are the colours that are going to go well with our inks and with our paper. So let's just put a little bit of those colours on. So this is for colouring her hair and her lips. And um, with, if I'm going to be using some purple on her, I want it to match with the purple ink that we're going to edge things with. So let's just have a look at some purple tones and see what matches in well. That's a little bit too violet-y, so let's have a look at this one. Mm, no, I think I like the first one better. And maybe a bit of pink in there for her hair. So that's going to tone in nice with those ones. But which pink is going to tone in with our backing card? So let's colour a bit more of that one and a bit more of this one and just see which one works best with our backing card. And I think it's going to be the softer one. So we'll keep that one out to use on her hair and probably on her lips. And we'll go with the, <laughs> this is where I say, put your pens in order of when you've tested them. That one, that's the purple we'll use. Okay, let's get our scratch pad up and start doing some inking.
So remembering which way I want to have my card up so I do my stenciling and stuff the right way. And we're just going to get our grape crush and just colour the edges of these bits that are going to be the chokers and headbands. And then they can be sitting drying. If it's getting too difficult to hang on to it, just grab a pair of tweezers because you're working on a fine piece of card. Okay, and particularly with the choker, And to finish this card, we're going to come in with some liquid pearls. So again, we'll have to test the colours a bit and find out what's going to work best. Okay, let's start working on our Miranda piece. So to start with, we need to give her some foundation, which is where our Versamagic chalk colours come in. So Sahara Sand does a good foundation colour and Pink Petunia does a great blusher. So I'll just grab my brushes. So I have a separate lot of my... Um, <laughs> reaching over here. A second set of brushes for using with my chalk inks so that they're not getting confused and having to be washed from the ones I use for all the dye inks. So let's grab that one and a small one for our blusher. Pop all those out of the way. So now with your Sahara sand, just pick up a little bit. You can actually use Mask Miranda, but we're just going to do a very light coverage of foundation here. When you're getting nearer edges, just push the brush down. So that you get an edge to the brush, which means you can color right up to the edge of her. That's enough for that. A Little bit of our blush color. So lid on that one. Now the reason I use the Versamagic Chalk Inks when I'm doing the foundation layer are working on the ladies' faces is that they dry, but they give a lovely soft, um, soft result, but also which looks like foundation. But they also dry waterproof, which means that as we're doing water coloring and things over the top, these aren't going to smudge. I just need a little bit on that side, and we'll pop a bit of eyeshadow on for her. So I'm doing this side first where um, I can sort of run from the hairline in and that side where I've got a little bit less ink on the brush so it's a bit more controllable. Rightio. Now because I'm doing a lot in this card I'm not going to do any much fancy colouring with that. We'll just keep it fairly basic. Let's give it a quick heat set. in and add some hair colour. So this is where I chose the pink and I'll also have my medium water brush standing by just to blend this out a bit. So yes we're giving her pink hair. So we could just do a few little curls down there and I'm just going to sort of do strokes over the hair and then just get the water brush just to soften that out a little bit. So we get it some sort of lighter and darker areas rather than colouring it all in in one sort of blob of colour. You also want to make it that it's the bits that reach the face that are not a solid line. More just to the edges there. Okay, come down the sides there. Now we have got some little tendrils there so we can do a few just wiggly lines. Pink is very pretty, isn't it? My water brush just to soften those out a bit. And finally, do some squiggly lines down here. A 
fill that out a little bit there. Okay, come over with a water brush, just soften those out a little bit. Excellent. Now let's grab our purple, pop the lid back on the pink. Although we could give her, no, don't, I was going to say we could give her some pink eyeshadow. I'm wanting to start to play with her, but I'm thinking, no, let's just focus on what we're doing here. I do find it looks good on her lips rather than doing all, colouring them all in one colour, similar to the hair. Colour a little bit of it, then use your water brush to soften it out and that way the lips look more three dimensional because you've got some light and shade happening there. Just give a little more depth to the bottom lip though. And I'm going to take a bit of artistic license and make her colours, her eyes the same colour. Okay. Now, while that's all drying, let's just start working on our background piece. This is where we're wanting to add in some stenciling and some stamping. And our stenciling is going to be, let's make sure I pop my chalk brushes to one side. Our stenciling, I'm going to start off with the Aquatini and then do the stamping in the Great Crush so we get a little bit of light and dark happening there. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to use the All That Jazz. We'll just see how the stenciling goes. So my stenciling is going to be with the... Oh, we didn't show this in our plan of what we're using. This is also out of the Bohemian Bliss set. So it's got a line of feathers and a line of daisies. So let's have some feathers coming down from the top. And keep in mind where we're going to be layering on our Miranda. So we need to, we want to make sure there's some feathers show around her. So, and we want some of those little dots around as well. But I'm going to be doing a stamp over in this corner. So I'm mainly going to focus my feathers there. And this is where we may need the all that jazz because the Aquatini might not show up enough over the aqua base colour. Now let's see how we go. lift our stencil up and see how it's looking that side looks good but this side is it showing up enough not really so let's bring out all that jazz in and add a little bit of deeper color on this side hold it all in place Lift up to check, that's better. So that should look quite nice going from a deeper shade into a softer shade. And now let's do some of the little daisies down the bottom. But this, I don't need the stronger colour for this. I'll go back to the Aquatini. And I'm just going to give the brush a bit of a wipe off on my scrap paper so it hasn't got the stronger colour still on it. Okay, let's have a look at our little daisies. Now I know I'm doing a stamp down that side as well. So I want to get the daisies coming up this side a bit more. Okay. Just giving a little bit of pattern there. OK. 
Okay, that's better. A little bit more color. Okay, now let's ink up our stamps with our Grape Crush. So I've got this one to go up in this top corner. And I've just got to check, I want to make sure that the beads are hanging down nice and parallel. Now I actually haven't used this stamp before, so I'm going to ink it up and stamp it off on my scrap paper a couple of times, just to sort of just give it a bit of a wipe, just to get it conditioned a bit. But that looks like it's stamping beautifully, so I don't need to stress over it. Okay, let's ink up thoroughly. So again, just before I stamp down, just hold it over my paper so I'm making sure I've got those beads nice and parallel with the edge. I'm not going to get the last one on because I actually want it going off the edge of the card. Make sure I get right down to the bottom of that feather. The feathers on it are gorgeous. really nice now with the same color when I was doing my plan for this one I actually embossed uh, this stamp here in clear oh, actually in the holographic and um, it came up beautifully but then I decided that no I just want it more subtly in the background so I'm not going to emboss it but sometimes it's good to have the ideas and just try them out Down. Now I've actually done it so there's a solid edge to the bottom of the stamp so I've actually run that off the bottom of the card a bit, off the edge of the card so that I don't um, end up with any gaps of paper of card colour showing through there. And I've now got to be a bit tricky and join it. So just Checking, this is the advantage of a clear stamp that I can butt it right up and hopefully have that pattern match fairly well so we really don't see where we've joined the two images together. That's looking really, really how I wanted it to look. Cool. Now let's just get a bit of a dark purple edge to the whole card. Love those two stamps together. Very hippie looking. Okay, now then Miranda, how are you looking? So she's going to nestle just in here. Let's get her headband and everything stuck on. So for these, I'm going to use my glossy accents. Actually, no, don't use, let's stick all the layers together and put those on last because otherwise I've got a liquid glue and I'm going to be then, I'd be then smooshing it to put the tape on the back of this bit. Really glad I thought of that before I started getting smooshy glue around the place. So let's stick her down first. Now I'm wondering if I need a purple edge around that too before I stick it down. Do it before I stick it down because I can't change my mind later. Okay, try that again. I just need to make sure that I get myself my edges all nice and parallel. Now then, 
I'm going to need tweezers to hang on to this. So I'm positioning the headband about like that. And I'm thinking that this is, we were, uh, my sister and I, my sister Andrea, who's now working with me on some of the live craft shows that we're doing, and she's also the one who draws these ladies for me. Um, she's a fashion designer by trade. So we've actually been talking about her doing an accessory set for the ladies with things like scarves and feathers and chokers, and I think headbands might be something that we want to have done. <laughs> I've forgotten where I had it. Okay, about there to there. <sighs> Let's get busy, girl. <laughs> yes. Once I put the feather on though, it should look hopefully more hippie rather than 80s exercise class. Let's pop a choker on as well. I haven't finished with her yet. You know, she's got it. She will get more hippie-ish. Okay, now to get Let's let those dry for me. We'll put our greeting on first, and then we're going to come in and add a little bit more there. So, with some all that jazz, let's ink up. We've got thanks and for making me smile, which I thought goes along with a, a hippie girl. So, I'm going to put this one in first so I can see where, or at least hold it over and see how this is going to work. Yep, I think that can go along the bottom edge there quite neatly. So gentle, gentle tap. Check that we're parallel with our base card. And then our thanks. And one of our advantages of clear stamps is we can hold it over and see how it's going to look. And I think on an angle will look best. A nice press down. Yes. Now the trickiest bit is going to be adding this feather in because I'm going to use just a couple of feathers off the Dreamcatcher stamp. I'm not going to be using the whole lot. So we pick up our stamp and have a look. I just want a couple of these feathers hanging down from that headband. And it's going to leave me with, I'm just looking at which ones are going to be best to use. It's going to leave me with a bit of a gap, but we'll fill that in with some liquid pearls. So I think my first thought, which was these first two feathers, and we're going to try and ink those up just in the purple. So we're just going to tap. or emboss them. I'm just hoping the purple is going to be deep enough to show over the, it's got to go over the top of the black. So I might be better actually to emboss them in a colour and then fill a bit of purple in around them. I'm just a bit worried that the purple ink isn't going to show up that if no, that'd be right because feathers are fluffy. So if a little bit of lines of her hair show through it, that would be fine. No, I think I think the first instinct was okay. So I'm tapping over the feathers that I want. But then I could either use a bit of paper just to mask the other feather. 
or I can wipe off with a, a cloth. So there's different ways of doing this. You can also put a little bit of masking tape over the part of the tape, uh, part of the stamp that you don't want to ink up. It's a bit hard when it's fluffy to actually get the tape to go exactly where you want it. So I'm just making sure that we've got taken that colour off there. That looks pretty good. Okay, cross your fingers everyone because I really don't want to muck this card up at this point. I'll get a nice close up so everyone can see. <laughs> Thanks Matthew. You're so helpful. No, it's not strong enough, is it? Okay, so we're going to need to emboss it and do it in a dark, a stronger embossing colour. Maybe... I did do some tests uh, with some of the purple embossing powder and I wasn't happy with it, so let's try something. Mmm, okay. Right, clean the stamp. You've got three minutes. Three minutes. It's not going to happen. I think we're going over time on this one. Okay. So this time I'm going to use my Versamark pen to ink those same feathers, which was those two. No, no, it's not going to be quick enough. It's going to have to be Versamark. And I will just put a bit of paper over that. Are you chuckling over there, Matthew? Looks like you're marking your finger. <laughs> Still going to get my damp cloth and just clean that feather off a little bit in case I got anything on it past the mask. Okay. So now I'm positioning it over the top of where I've already done it in the purple. Don't you love clear stamps so you can see where you're stamping? This mark on. Just go over and take off any bits that we don't want. Okay. I have to remember this colour. What are we using? Cornflower blue. That goes really nice. With our aquas and stuff, doesn't it? that down a little bit. Still going to come in with the bit of the purple. You sticking nicely, thank you. And you're sticking good. Now I'm going to have a look at adding in a little bit, of, little bit of liquid pearls. So I'm looking at what colours might match in nicely there. And I reckon we'll go with purple rather than mermaid. So this is actually the liquid pearls in violet. Let's just add a little bit of purple into our feather there. Excellent. Uh, 
and we'll grab our violet liquid pearls and add in the beads which is where we can now put in some extra beads just to join it up with the headband and we also then need some beads on the headband and some on the choker and our last bit which might spoil the whole thing is a little bit of white Posca pen this is just to create the hippie look or, or Miranda goes to a music festival look make sure we've got some white flowing there come on, play ball It's not looking overly white to me. I go between whether I prefer white gel pens or the Posca pen. Today it's going to be a gel pen. So we're just going to add some dots here. There we go, Hippie Miranda, heading off to a music festival, about to have a ball. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that one guys, something with a bit of a difference but lots of fun. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next time.